opinions expressed on this program are those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of Salem Communications, staff, management, or advertisers. Activist Radio is on the air. You've tuned in to the Mark Harrington Show, sponsored by Created Equal. Mark is training a new generation of leaders to take on the culture of death and win. If you don't like abortion, don't have one. The only thing that can be said to be objective truth is that there is no objective truth. It does come out in one piece. It comes out in one piece. I would argue that we certainly are not all created equal. And now, here's Mark. We will remember the Alamo. That's right. We're going to remember the Alamo. You might wonder what I mean by that. Why would we be remembering the Alamo? We're not Texans here. Well, the reason why we're going to remember the Alamo today on the Mark Harrington Show is because we just spent a week in Texas conducting our outreach events with a group called the Love of Truth Ministries. And besides going to the Alamo, which I'm going to spend today's show talking about, We went to two colleges, San Antonio College and uh, Texas State University. And we set up our prenatal development and abortion display on campus and debated students. We do that all over the country. And we worked with Daryl Rodriguez. He's been on the program before from Love of Truth Ministries. So I was down there to help them get up to speed, to train them a little bit on... uh, how to be uh, an effective pro-life activist and so we went to some college campuses but also if you're in Texas and you want to be in front of a whole bunch of folks you go to the Alamo and so that's what we did we had a permit for the Alamo to set up our large screen jumbotron TV Our Jumbotron TV, which I've talked about here on the Mark Harrington Show, which is groundbreaking in in the sense that no one has ever attempted to do what we're doing. And that is to play abortion video live of abortions in progress on a large screen in the public square. Now you might ask, well, why would you do that, Mark? Well, here's why. Because Americans don't know what abortion looks like. They still, to this day, 41 years after Roe v. Wade, are mostly ignorant about this so-called procedure. And seeing is believing. Injustice must be seen to be understood. We understand that. We can't outlaw something that we're trying to to cover up. And so that's what we do. We take this into the public square, and we've done it all across America, San Francisco, Washington, D.C., Cincinnati, Ohio, Tampa, Florida. Philadelphia. In fact, a few days prior to the Alamo event, we took the Jumbotron to the most sacred ground in America. That is Independence Hall. And right out front on Independence Mall, we displayed abortion video at the very hall where the First Amendment was ratified in 1787. And unlike San Antonio, which I'm going to talk about here, and the city officials, the National Park Service, which, by the way, is a federal agency, and that's important to remember, gave us a permit, no problems, we set up, we displayed, really without any issues whatsoever. Well, that wasn't the case in San Antonio at the Alamo. We're dealing with city versus federal city property versus federal property. I believe these locations, these historic sites like Independence Hall or the Alamo or any other historic place around America that speaks of our independence and freedom is a ideal place. There's no better location than to put this type of information out and that's why we did it. That's why we did it in Independence Hall. But what happened at the Alamo 
we've never had happen before, and that is we had a permit approved by the city, and then at 7 p.m. the night before, I get an email from the development department that's in charge of sign ordinance code uh, uh, compliance or enforcement on signs saying that we can't display at the Alamo because we're in violation of a digital sign ordinance. 7 p.m. the night before, an email, no phone call, no citation of the code. Here's what happened. The media got a hold of the fact that we were coming. The news was on the day before about us coming. The city then began to scour, began to search the code in the city to find a way to stop us. That's what happened. And therefore, when we arrived in that morning with the permit in hand, the city did everything it could to stop us. Now, what I'm going to play here is a, a, an audio clip. It's going to be the, it's the video, but it's the audio of the video that was on the, the news there in, in, in San Antonio. The day that we got stopped from displaying our Jumbotron TV at the Alamo. And folks, we will remember the Alamo. We can't express our First Amendment rights if we can't get access to the, to the, uh, to the plaza. Developing right now, anti-abortion advocates are threatening to sue the city of San Antonio after a demonstration at Alamo Plaza comes to a halt. The group planned to use a jumbotron to show video of doctors performing abortions, but the permit for the big screen was revoked. News for San Antonio's Emily Baca is getting answers tonight from city leaders about what happened out there tonight. Emily? Delane, it was a chaotic morning, as you'll see, but it comes down to this. Digital and portable signs like jumbotrons are not allowed in historic areas, and that includes Alma Plaza. Today's demonstration was supposed to have pictures and message boards like a similar one held yesterday at San Antonio College. It would have also featured a jumbotron showing graphic images of abortion. Here it is in a YouTube video provided by anti-abortion group Created Equal. Instead, business as usual at the historic shrine as the group's demonstrators stood on the plaza in a stalemate with the city. They didn't give us the, the actual code we're violating. They just said that we were in violation. Mark Harrington showed us the original application for a permit to use Alamo Plaza, where the group wrote the event would feature a jumbotron. The email exchange with the city included pictures of what it would look like. He also showed us a letter the group received from the city last night, revoking the permit for the jumbotron. Initially, San Antonio police said the group could be fined, but officers would not stop demonstrators from putting up the jumbotron. Harrington was okay with that. We'll be able to put the jumbotron up and we're going to be able to show people what abortion looks like. But the truck carrying the Jumbotron kept driving. Very frustrated. In fact, I got to tell this guy, hey, go tell him to take another loop around the, the uh, block. After confusion over if demonstrators were allowed to move planters and park on the plaza. The game is changing again from the city. Finally, Police Chief William McManus got involved and said no Jumbotron, but the demonstration could continue. They were more than welcome to distribute any literature or uh, any other information that they wanted to put out. The anti-abortion group believes the decision violates its First Amendment rights. What we think is going on here is that the city is involved in content-based or viewpoint-based discrimination. So we asked Roderick Sanchez, the city leader who revoked the permit, what happened? We have one department that issues event permits. Uh, so they issued the permit for an event, uh, not knowing that there was a separate sign code, which, which our department enforces. And that code prohibits digital or portable signs in historic districts like Alamo Plaza. That's kind of two strikes against what they wanted to do today. So demonstrators canceled today's event, but say they will bring their anti-abortion message back to the Alamo City. They thought that they were going to get rid of us. They're wrong, because we're not going away and we'll be back. The group they're part of, Created Equal, promised to sue the city of San Antonio over what happened today. And we'll let you know if they follow through on that. Reporting live downtown, Emily Balkum, News 4, San Antonio. Well, there you go. Uh, that's the report from uh, NBC San Antonio, basically talking about how the city intervened in the 11th hour to stop us from showing abortion at the Alamo. Now, let me try to unpack this real quickly for you. Two things. First of all, is there anyone that's surprised in my audience right now 
at the incompetence of government right now. Think about it from the federal to the state level down to the local level. It just doesn't seem like they get anything right anymore. And we could chalk that up to incompetence. I think there's a level of that going on here. Where the right hand wasn't talking to the left hand, they didn't know what was going on. Uh, the, the approval of the permit was by one, organiz- one, one part of government. The sign code enforcement was another part of the, the, uh, the government, and they don't speak to each other. However, having said all that, and I wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt, it was clear to us that the city was arbitrarily and selectively enforcing this sign code to stop us from doing what? Show abortion. This was about abortion, not sign compliance. We find that all over the country. They try to use these obscure sign or other types of ordinances to shut us down. So, here's why I know. Because it wasn't long after this report, the day after, that a local TV station played video of a boxing event at the Alamo that showed a jumbotron in use. And once we began to look a little deeper, we found out that Glenn Beck, the radio talk show host, had a tea party event at the Alamo using a jumbotron. Once the city was confronted with that information, now they are admitting that they did not enforce the sign ordinance in the past, but they did against us. This is a classic case of viewpoint discrimination And we are now preparing ourselves for a lawsuit against the city of San Antonio based on our First Amendment protected rights of free speech. A federal lawsuit. And we'll see where this goes. You know, the important thing is, folks, this. The First Amendment, we need to understand. The First Amendment was adopted by our founders to protect offensive and disturbing speech because popular speech needs no protection. And rather than doubling down on censoring free speech, which is what the city says they're now going to do at the Alamo, they should protect the rights of all Americans to express themselves regardless of viewpoint. Just as the Battle of the Alamo was lost, and it was the first time around, that first battle, if you remember, was lost. But Texas independence from Mexico was eventually won. We may have lost this battle, at least the first round of it, to show the victims of abortion at the Alamo and in San Antonio. But we'll be back and we will remember the Alamo. We're going to remember the Alamo, and historic sites, in my opinion, are some of the best places to show this kind of thing. Because there are people that died. They shed their blood, their honor, their sacred honor, for the very right of us to express ourselves, our, their posterity, our posterity. And therefore, the best way to honor The founders, if it's at Independence Hall or Washington, D.C., or those who died at the Alamo, is to express ourselves the very way they intended us to and the very reason they often died to protect us. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Mark Harrington Show on WRFD. do other pro-life leaders think of Mark Harrington and Created Equal? Listen to Lila Rose of Live Action. Just wanted to say that we stand, I stand 100% with the efforts of Created Equal, with getting the truth visually out to students on campuses and inspiring them and equipping them to have that debate with fellow students to encourage them to really question their support for abortion and encourage them ultimately to see the humanity of the unborn child, the violence of abortion, and ultimately to join our side, which is the winning side, the side of life. Mark Harrington is a missionary and free speech advocate and Mark has been on the front line of the debate over abortion for over 20 years. Mark needs your prayers and financial support. Please support Mark and Created Equal by going to createdequal.net or send a check to Created Equal, Post Office Box 360502, Columbus, Ohio, 43230. 
Your gifts are tax deductible. That's right, you're listening to the Mark Harrington Show here on WRFD and streaming on my website at createdequal.net. You can grab the audio there or you can listen to it on iTunes. Well, we've been talking about abortion victim photos and video and and, and the buzzsaw that we ran into at the Alamo in, in San Antonio, Texas. And the idea that we're likely going to have to sue the city in order to protect our First Amendment rights. And let me just say this. We are breaking new ground with this stuff. I mean, years and years ago, it was just the still images that we took into the public square. And we faced some of the same reactions from cities and colleges across America. But once we won, once we established the precedent legally and just through doing it over you know the several years uh, people have backed off they understand this is a protected speech but when it comes to a video different ball game different ball game we're up in the ante here um, these uh, these children that are depicted in these videos and these still images deserve to be seen they deserve to be seen. And some people say, well, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's not proper. Uh, it, it doesn't respect the dead. I would say this. Abortion video and photos actually reattaches the dignity that was lost these individuals during the abortion. There's no better way to honor them than to show them. Now, we were at Philadelphia in Independence Hall. I'm sorry, Independence Mall, outside of Independence Hall, the very place where the First Amendment was penned, where the words were penned to the Declaration of Independence that said, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights and among those are the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The very place that our founders wrote those words, created equal, the pro-life organization, displayed abortion victim photos. I think perfect, perfect juxtaposition of these two things. The fact is the Declaration protects or should uh, all men being created equal. But in 2014, there's an entire victim class of Americans that are being discriminated against to the degree of being butchered, dismembered, and decapitated in America. And that is the pre-born. They don't enjoy that idea of being created equal, that notion that our founders uh, penned uh, at Independence Hall in 1776. So that's where we were. Now, there was a, a, a TV station, and there were several that came out that day, but they ran this clip, this, this story, where they took some people, put them in a room, a focus group, if you will, and asked them to watch our abortion video. And then they ask them to give, them, give their reactions. And I find this very instructive. If there's anybody out there listening to the sound of my voice that has any doubts as to whether these images are effective, you've got to listen to this. The abortion debate has been going on for well over 30 years, with both sides using various tactics to try to spread their message. So now a pro-life group created equal thinks that the best way to push their agenda is to actually show abortions on a video screen in public places. Uh, I warn you, it's really graphic, um, showing various stages of abortion, results of abortion, including aborted fetuses. I have a dream that all men are created equal. (laughs) 
Yeah, they're watching the video right now. I'm going to move this up. So you've got this focus group watching the video. Has ever been. Okay, and here's their reactions. Stop it. Disturbing. Yeah. Difficult. That was as quiet as this room has ever been. But it's just, yeah. there's nothing to say. It's absolutely heartbreaking. They've done this before. They take over the green with huge billboards with these type of images. And I'm not going to lie, I've seen those multiple times before. It makes you very uncomfortable. This video takes it to a whole new level with videos that you see. And, you know, I, this is just wrong. So I was there at Independence Mall in Philadelphia. This video was on a loop on a big screen in the middle of a tourist area. So I actually asked their national director, why was it necessary to show such a graphic video in public with children around? Well, it's graphic because abortion's graphic. This is a, the most common medical procedure performed in the United States, yet most people don't know what it looks like. And there's a reason for that, because we don't want to know. The group did have signs up surrounding the area warning people that that video was playing. Uh, but with, even with the signs up, many of the parents who were there, particularly those who were there with children, thought that it was absolutely inappropriate for this to be playing in public. To see that they are showing a film without permission, basically. I mean, and there's children, this is my little girl, that I really wouldn't expose this to. I can't even imagine how this was allowed. I gotta stop it right there. Here's a person that needs a little bit of a remedial education in the First Amendment. Permission? Who gives permission? The founders. God gave permission to, to express ourselves. The First Amendment, protected right. It's not a, a right that's given by men in government. It's a right that was established by God himself and protected by the government. So she needs a little bit of an education. Now with her children, we did everything we could to warn parents, and many of them found another route or they averted the child's gaze as they passed by. But the fact of the matter is we are not going to be silenced. We're not going to be put into a corner and said this cannot be shown. A nation that sheds blood, a nation that kills its children, if that's the public policy of the nation, then the victims and the suffering needs to be public as well. So Philadelphia was the first stop this time of this message, but the group Created Equal says that they plan to continue doing this throughout the region and the country in a lot of high traffic areas. Um, and it continues the debate as to whether or not a graphic display of abortion is freedom of speech or is it inappropriate to have something like this playing in public. What's well, interesting. Got to stop there. Freedom of speech protects offensive, disturbing speech. Obscenity sexual obscenity is against the law. Trying to conflate the two between abortion images and video and pornographic obscenity is incorrect. It's wrong. It's two different things. Thing like Something like that, I mean, it's clearly jarring to watch that. And what I find interesting is that, that you get different reactions. Some people react just to the fact of the video, but others react to say, wow, that, that's something that's happening. Uh, it's a very powerful message, but sometimes free speech has a, an ugly side and reality has an ugly side that some people find jarring. But look, that's why we have a First Amendment. I agree with you about the cost of free speech, and sometimes we need to step over a line uh, in order to find out where the line is. I think we just found out with that video. I think it's entirely inappropriate to be showing on a big screen. Uh, I've forbidden my nine-year-old from seeing horror movies that were a quarter as bad as that. It's, it's inappropriate. It's shocking, and I think it's going to backfire. On Let it. me ask you, Hank. I mean, I mean, first of all, how could it backfire? Could it get any worse in America right now? Forty-one years, unabated child killing, with really no end in sight. Could it get any worse? The national policy of a nation is abortion on demand up to nine months of pregnancy, except for a few restrictions in the states. Uh, I don't think virtually anything can backfire, short of, which we all condemn, and that is the use of lethal force or force against the abortion industry. In horror movies and that is one is is reality and the other is fantasy well, I, have, I have friends who've had abortions mm -hmm. and they I. wish they knew exactly what the abortion process was going to be before doing it so some women would benefit well, from having that? seen that video and the, i think the bigger question at least to me the bigger question there is why didn't they 
I mean, the information on mm -hmm. having an abortion, that. again, that that woman said to me, is not something that should be taken away. This video is rare. People don't get an opportunity to see it. Regardless of how you feel on the issue, if they're if their goal was to get you to invoke these emotions and these visual images for the word abortion, I mean, they did a great job. I'm never going to forget that for the rest of my life. Well, there you go, folks. I mean, there you go. What a, what a great uh, apologetic, if you will, for what we do. Folks, that's on our YouTube page. Go to Created Equal, uh, our YouTube dot com forward slash created equal films and you will find that video of this uh, this this uh, news article online folks I appreciate you listening be with us uh, in prayer as we go out onto the streets of Columbus next week with our jumbotron downtown Columbus and at Columbus State University uh, go to our website at createdequal.net support us financially folks we need your help. We'll see you next time. God bless you. God bless America. And remember America. To bless God. You've been listening to Mark Harrington, your radio activist. Sponsored by Created Equal. For more information on how to become a witness against the evil, evil plague in America, call Created Equal at 614-269-7808. 614-269-7808. Or go online to createdequal.net. Createdequal.net. Be sure to tune to The Mark Harrington Show next time for your marching orders in the culture war.